here. Yeah. You see it uh, now. The latest. It's uh, a lot of pain for them story yesterday. about uh, the congressional <laughs> stock trading they lost uh, money. mess that we've been talking Bad about day. on this show for a very long time. Uh, the report uh, tracks tens of thousands of trades from members of Congress and their families. They found that 97 current senators or representatives reported buying or selling stocks that conflicted with their work or congressional committees. Joining us right now is one of the authors of the investigation, an old friend of the program, Kate Kelly, of course, from the New York Times and a CNBC contributor. Kate, congratulations on the story. Uh, let's sort of walk through the details here of just how bad it is. And, and most importantly, there's the perception of bad, which is to say perception of conflict, and then there's, of course, the issue of real conflict. And I'm curious what you found in terms of the distinction between the both of those. Well, first of all, Andrew, thanks so much for having me. It's a pleasure to talk about this analysis. Um, I think I have to say up front, I mean, we did not find anybody that we know was insider trading. If we had, we would have said so clearly. And, uh, you know, in this case, what we're looking at is a lot of perceptual conflicts. And, you know, some situations, uh, Pennsylvania Republican Congressman Mike Kelly comes to mind, that have been investigated by congressional ethics officers and referred to the Committee on Ethics um, for further questions and further review. So, you know, there are some transactions that have raised eyebrows, but for the most part, what we did was take a look at the combination between a congressman or senator's committee assignments and the stocks and sectors that they or their immediate family members were trading that a reasonable person could argue dovetail with those committee right. assignments. So in other words, if you're on the Armed Services Committee and you're trading Raytheon and Northrop Grumman, that might reasonably be seen to be a potential conflict because you could right. be in possession of non-public information occasionally or even regularly. What percentage of the folks who you identified as doing this said to you, you know what? It wasn't me. It, I didn't do the trading myself. I use, a, I use an outside firm that does all of this. I, it's a completely hands-off situation. Or I have a spouse that did this, uh, but they do that professionally, and so it's a different situation. I mean, how, how, what kind of explanations did you hear, and which ones were believable to you and which ones weren't? We got a large percentage of people saying, my broker or my spouse does this without my knowledge. Um, there was a small handful that said, I do this. I own it. I think further restrictions are ridiculous. Uh, Steve Cohen, Democrat of Tennessee, had that tone. Um, Tommy Tuberville, Republican of Alabama, had a little bit of that tone. Uh, but most people, the vast majority, I should say Tuberville trades through a broker, but he thinks further restrictions are, quote unquote, ridiculous. I'm just saying most people uh, said their broker is empowered to do this and they have no knowledge of it. So we've talked, for example, of Rokana on this broadcast about this issue. He always uh, sort of refers and says, not me, somebody else. Um, did, was there anybody on this list who said, yeah, let's, let's change the law? Oh, 100%. I mean, the, the potential law that we featured in the story is called the Trust in Congress Act. And this is sponsored by Abigail Spanberger, Democrat of Virginia. But she has, at last check, 67 co-sponsors, including a number of Republicans. So that's that's a decent chunk of people who say everybody should either divest before they start service in earnest. I mean, you can wait until after you win your election and you're sworn in. But like in pretty short order, you have to either divest or put your assets in a qualified blind trust. And there are some 10, 12 uh, different bills floating around the Senate and the Congress with various approaches to this issue. Um, and you might be surprised by the range of sort of political thinkers that sponsor these. Josh Hawley has sponsored a bill, Ben Sass, um, and then you have moderates like Spanberger. You also have Elizabeth Warren, who has co-sponsored a bill. Actually, I think this is the only one that was co-introduced by a Democrat and a Republican. Her partner is Steve Daines. So there seems to be, anecdotally speaking, a lot of support, and even quantitatively speaking, I don't know, 80, 90, 100 members out of the 535 who have actually attached their names to some legislation. So you think, well, if you're going to handicap this, you actually think something's going to get done here? I think it's questionable. I mean, as you know, the clock is running out on this Congress, and there's a lot on their plates. Um, midterm elections are going to be a huge time suck. Um, there are compromise efforts ostensibly going on in both chambers. 
Zoe Lofgren has been asked by House Speaker Nancy Pelosi to put together a Democratic sort of comp compromise bill um, that would take a number of issues and address them, not just sort of the qualified blind trust idea, which is in the Spanberger bill, but some other enforcement mechanisms, uh, closing the gaps of reporting mechanisms. I mean, to bring that to life for you, Andrew, if you have a relatively large trade, you report that as between $1 million and $5 million of value. <laughs> I think mean, you could drive a truck through that. So as a constituent or a journalist or someone that's interested in transparency, you want more details than that. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.